The Trump administration is not just destroying democracy here in the United States. They're doing it around the world. You got to check this out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel. This is Mark Weisbrot, by the way, from CEPR. So two days ago, I got a press release from Senator Sanders' office uh, titled, uh, Sanders, two dozen lawmakers call for OAS accountability to ensure, ensure fair elections in Bolivia. Uh, Senator Bernie Sanders, Representative Jan Schakowsky, Representative Hank Johnson, Representative Deb Haaland, Holland, uh, led two dozen members of Congress uh, calling on the State Department to pursue a full independent review of the Organization of American States regarding its actions last November. This was also signed by Ro Khanna and uh, Jamie Raskin and Raul Grijalva and Barbara Lee and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Jim McGovern, just a bunch of Ilhan Omar, a bunch of people signing this. So what is this all about? Why are so many progressives in, the, in, the, in Congress flipped out about what's going on in Bolivia with the Organization of American States, something that most of us probably haven't heard about in 20, 30 years, if that? Uh, on the line with us is Mark Weisbrot. He's the co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research, CEPR.org, or .net, excuse me, is their website. He's also the president of the Just Foreign Policy Group and the author of several books, including his most recent, Failed, What the Experts Got Wrong About the Global Economy. And uh, Mark's uh, Twitter handle is Mark uh, Weisbrot, W-E-I-S-B-R-O-T. Mark, welcome back to the program. It's been a while since we've talked. Tell us about this. Uh, you know, what yeah. was the situation in Bolivia with uh, Evo Morales? What was going on? Why and how was that a, uh, arguably a good thing? And then what happened with the OAS in the 2019 election? Well, in terms of Evo Morales and his government from 2005 uh, to, or he's elected 2005, it goes 2006 to uh, last year, um, there was, it was enormously successful. First of all, it's a majority or, well, somewhere between 40 and 50 percent uh, indigenous and it's the so it's the largest indigenous percentage of population in the Americas, and he, you know he was the first indigenous uh, president, and he was able you know his government was able to reduce poverty uh, by forty two percent, reduce extreme poverty by sixty percent, and of course um, indigenous Bolivians were much poorer on average than the rest of the population, so they gained a lot, and that's why his support is still overwhelming among uh, indigenous Bolivians. And that's also why I think this story has gotten so little attention, by the way. It's just the racism of it. I mean, this was a, you know, uh, this was a completely racist coup, as we'll get to in a minute. And uh, to restore the people who used to run the country before he was elected and, uh, you know, who are mostly white and mestizo and there. Uh, and, and, and that's what happened. Uh, but it was, you know, they, they were able to accomplish uh, quite a bit, uh, and uh, he would have been uh, almost certainly, well, he was, he was reelected by the count uh, that really uh, took place. Right. So, and, and, and the Morales administration had some really substantial successes. I mean, they, they radically cut poverty, they, they uh, extended uh, education across the country. I mean, it was, it was a, a, a real success story, Castro-style socialism success story. This was, you know, good, good government success story. So how did it get taken down? What happened? Well, they had an election on October 20th. And they had the Organization of American States was overseeing the election. Uh, they had an election observation uh, mission. So they're observers. But they're, you know, they have a, a certain uh, credibility. Uh, well, they don't have it actually among people who really look at it. But they're official observers. And they came in there and when uh, there was a, there's a preliminary count in the election. This is the short uh, version of the story. There's a preliminary count that takes place while people are waiting for the official count to be taken. And so it's, it's a kind of a quick count, and it's done by private contractors. And it's not official, and it doesn't count, doesn't determine the result. But uh, so that count um, was interrupted uh, when uh, after uh, about 84% of the votes were counted. And 
uh, Evo Morales was ahead with 45.7% uh, of the vote. And he was ahead uh, of the second place finisher by 7.9%. So the rules are uh, if you uh, get over 40%, but you're ahead by 10 points, uh, then you win in the first round. And he didn't have 10 points, but then when the votes came, uh, when the count, the quick count, or the preliminary count was resumed, uh, he was just at 10.2. And so the OAS seized on that and issued a press release the next day, uh, strongly implying uh, that he he stole it. In fact, and then the OAS, uh, head of the OAS, would go ahead and, uh, a couple of weeks later and say that he, he did. He called it the stolen election. And in the So why would the OAS say this, said, Mark? Because they uh, they wanted to overturn uh, the election, and there's a, so much. Is this evidence. because rich people in Bolivia wanted to go back to being massively rich and not pay high taxes to to support poor people in Bolivia? I mean, is it, it, it was it that simple and that crass, or you know, rich people across South America? I mean, who who runs the OAS? What what's actually going on here? We, well, we have about two and a half know, minutes, Mark. Okay, so the short again, the short theory is. That the head of the OAS, Almagro, uh, Luis Almagro, he wanted to do this. I, I mean, if I had to guess, and most people would guess, he wanted to be reelected as secretary general, and he needed the support of the Trump administration, and especially the hardcore of the Trump administration, people like Rubio. Uh, and uh, this was a, a crime. It was more a crime of opportunity. I don't know that he would have done it if it hadn't come up like this. Uh, because they could use the optics of the interruption in the vote count, which actually wasn't suspicious at all. Uh, there were any number of reasons why the vote count was interrupted. Uh, and it, it wasn't a vote count that meant anything either. So, uh, and so he took advantage of that, and the OAS mission took advantage of that to promote uh, that the election was stolen. And that worked because the opposition didn't want to accept the results anyway, and they were in the streets and there was violence. And, and so uh, they used the OAS, uh, and so did the media. The media went or just ran with it. They didn't question them at all until very recently, in June. I mean, nine months later, finally you're getting reports in the, in the, in the major media that, oh, maybe they weren't telling the truth. But it was obvious from the right. beginning that they were lying. And uh, so they lied, and it became the political foundation of this coup. That all around the world. If you ask anybody who, you know, just picked up the New York Times or any other paper or uh, on the, just looked on the news on the web and said what happened, asked what happened in the Bolivian election, they would tell you, oh, yeah, the, that uh, if they were reading it, they would say, oh, yeah, Evo Morales uh, stole the election. And it was only because the OAS uh, created this false uh, narrative. So can anything be done about this, Mark? Yeah, I think so. I mean, first of all, the Congress getting involved is a big thing, finally. And well, they actually been, they've been involved, uh, you know, for a while. You had members of Congress, part of uh, four of the signatures, uh, signatories on that letter wrote to the OAS and demanded answers about it back in November, and they still haven't answered. Uh, so what can hmm. people do? I think people can go to their member of Congress and ask them, to go along with, uh, for example, Representative Jan Schakowsky and Chewy Garcia, uh, they're from Chicago, and, and, and say uh, there needs to be an investigation. Congress needs to investigate this. And Congress needs to make sure that uh, when they do another election on October 18th, if the, if the de facto government doesn't cancel that again, that it's clean that the OAS doesn't do the same yeah. thing because there's still going to be observers.